Yeah, I'll segue then, since you mentioned it, to universalism. Yeah. Since you mentioned that a lot of us are like Catholics, but don't really follow uh, Christ's teaching. Yeah. This one sounded the alarm for me because it made so much sense. And I realized that many of my friends and loved ones need to be evangelized. They don't believe in universalism per se, mm -hmm. but they don't live their lives as if they're, they fear the possibility of hell either. Right. So to those who don't know what universalism is and yeah, maybe you could tell us, and what are we lack, lacking in terms of warning people yeah. against it? Well, Jay, you, you certainly are identifying really important issues and, uh, yeah, hopefully we can make a contribution here. But if I were to describe how many of our fellow Catholics throughout the world, uh, particularly in the West, though, but it sounds like it's also in the Philippines. It is. Look at the world today. I would describe it like this. Mm -hmm. Broad and wide is the way that leads to heaven. And almost everybody's going that way. Narrow is the door and difficult the road that leads to hell. And hardly anybody's going that way. Maybe serial killers, you know, whatever. Now, the trouble the gospels, with this... Yeah. It's just the opposite of what Jesus himself said. You know, what mm -hmm. did Jesus say? Matthew chapter 7, verses 13 and 14. Jesus says, broad and wide is the way that leads to destruction. And many are traveling that way. But narrow is the door and difficult the road that leads to life. And few there are who are finding it. Now, we know Jesus didn't say this because this is how he wants it to be. You know, 1 Timothy chapter 2, we mm -hmm. know that God wills the salvation of the whole human race that yeah, everybody yeah. come to the truth and we, and we know that jesus isn't happy that this is the situation yeah. when he was at the mount of olives looking over his own city he was weeping because they were missing the opportunity that god was giving them in the personal presence of jesus and he knew mm -hmm. that because of that there are going to be terrible consequences the destruction of jerusalem in 70 a.d yeah. which is a, a sign of the final judgment mm -hmm. you know and 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 so yeah and, and we, we also know that the people who are currently on the Broadway don't need to stay on the Broadway. But if nobody cares about mm. reaching out to them, if nobody cares mm. about praying and sacrificing for them, if nobody cares about evangelizing them, if nobody cares about inviting them to places where they can hear the gospel or giving them a book mm. they can read or giving their personal testimony, they're just going to keep drifting along. So I think this mm. universalism which is the presumption that everybody or almost everybody is going to be saved. It's just undermining holiness, undermining evangelization, mm. undermining being able to really hear what Jesus is saying. You know, so I'm glad you, you brought this up. I think it's a very mm. important issue. Yeah. And sometimes they bring out Lumen Gentium. They cite it. They say that the idea that people who haven't heard the gospel can be saved and they yeah. bring out Lumen Gentium. What's, what is really taught by the church in Lumen Gentium? Boy, you're asking all the good questions, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I, I've been concerned about this issue for a long time, and I, I left grad school you know, a good number of years ago, and then at a certain point, I ended up getting a master's in theology, even though I wasn't planning to. And, mm -hmm. uh, and then they asked, the seminary asked me if I'd be willing to make a long story short, get a doctorate mm -hmm. by going to Rome, mm -hmm. to the pontifical uh, University of St. Thomas called the Angelicum, run by the Dominicans. And uh, I said, I'd be willing to go and do this, to leave my country and move to Rome, if I would be able to work on a particular topic. And this is the topic. Mm -hmm. You know, is it possible for people who haven't heard the gospel to be saved, is it almost, is it easy? Is it hard? What, what, what's, what's really the truth here? What does the church really teach about this? Yeah. So Rome agreed that I could do that topic. So I moved to Rome and mm -hmm. did this topic and it ended up in a book called, Will Many Be Saved? Mm -hmm. What Vatican II mm -hmm. actually yep. teaches and its implications for new evangelization. So I could, I could take five minutes if you want to give a little summary of that. Sure, sure. Okay. That's, that's fine. Okay, so uh, Constitution on the Church from Vatican II, Section 16, it says, it's possible under certain circumstances for somebody who hasn't heard the gospel to be saved. Mm -hmm. So what are the circumstances or what are the conditions in which this is possible? 
One is that it's not people's fault that they haven't heard the gospel. Mm -hmm. So it's called inculpable ignorance of the gospel. They didn't have a chance to hear it. Mm -hmm. Secondly, that nevertheless, they're seeking God. Nevertheless, they care about God who's revealing himself in the now, creation. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that Romans 1 says that God has revealed himself to the whole human race through the creation. And if you look at the stars, if you look at a microscope, if you look at the world, yes. you kind of know that there's somebody behind this. And if you're not interested in knowing who this is, and if mm. you're not interested in knowing what his will is, you're sealing yourself off in a certain way from how God wants to communicate with you. Mm. The mm. second condition then is sincerely seeking God. The okay. third condition is living according to the light of conscience, assisted by grace. And this is based on Romans chapter two, where it says those who know the law of God will be judged on the basis of it, but those who mm -hmm. don't will be judged on the law of each person's conscience. Now, then it goes on to say, and quite honestly, these mm -hmm. last three sentences are almost completely ignored by everybody who talks about this issue. Even yeah. famous <laughs> theologians completely ignore the last three sentences. And what the last three sentences say, it says, nevertheless, very often, Human beings exchange the truth for a lie and worship the creature rather than the creator, or else they give in to ultimate mm -hmm. despair. Therefore, it's urgent that we carry out the mission of evangelization. So what the church is saying in those last three sentences is we're not living in a neutral environment. The world, mm -hmm. the flesh, and the devil are very powerful influences on every person's life. Even us Catholics, with all the help of the sacraments, the scripture, the Christian community, uh, sometimes we, we give in to our fallen desires, you know, the, the, the disordered desires that are a result of original sin. Sometimes we're so influenced by the world that we exchange the truth of God for a lie. Sometimes mm -hmm. we can't even discern what's from the devil and what's from the Holy Spirit. And so we, we receive the lies that the devil's going to infiltrating into our minds and hearts and emotions all the time so mm -hmm. even when you have all the help of christ in the church sometimes it's difficult to resist the world of flesh and the devil but when you don't have the help of christ in the church it's absolutely easy to give in to disordered desires it's yeah. absolutely yeah. easy not to go through the pain of offending the culture it's absolutely easy to go along with people who are heading on the broad way heading to destruction it's absolutely easy to give into the temptations of the mm -hmm. evil one. So it's possible for people to be saved without hearing the gospel under certain conditions, but it's not easy. Mm -hmm. And, and mm -hmm. if we really care about people being in heaven rather than hell, and there really is a heaven, there really is a hell, Christianity is in the game, Jesus mm -hmm. didn't die for no reason, uh, we're going to be concerned about their salvation. We're not just going to pray for healing for their bodies or the men to get into good schools or whatever. We're, we're going to be concerned about their relationship with the Lord. We're going we're gonna to pray that they, they have faith, that they repent, that they start living a Christian life. Yeah. I, thanks for that explanation, Dr. Martin. Because sometimes, like, they, if you just read the first part without mm -hmm. going to the three points that you mentioned, mm -hmm. yeah. it doesn't make sense to go out there and evangelize, uh, like, tribes of people. Right. <laughs> and I, I would like to tell you my reversion story real quick because I was yeah, living sure. a life yeah. as a... Hey, it's your program. You could do whatever <laughs> you want. I, I was living a life as a lukewarm Catholic, but I'm a bit knowledgeable of apologetics and I defend the faith, but I'm not a Christian in deeds. And one day I was debating with my Jehovah's Witness friend and Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe that hell exists. Hmm. Then when I'm debating and defending the belief in hell, I realized that I myself is not living a life as if I fear like I'm going to hell. So this realization made me, uh, pushed me to taking my faith seriously. And if only more people could know that because it changed me. The, yeah. the realization that I might go to hell changed yeah. me. If more yeah. people would know that, it right. it would change a lot of hearts. I, I, I really agree. And that's a great testimony. You know, people hear that it's possible for people to get saved without hearing the gospel. And they make this big jump to, they presume that everybody will be, you know, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, like 
and there's so much talk about God's mercy, which is absolutely important. God is really so merciful. Thanks be to God. But the, the most powerful devotion in many places in the Catholic Church these days is the Divine Mercy devotion. Do you have that in the Philippines? We do. We do. We, we yeah. have uh, shrines for the Divine Mercy. Yeah. Here in the and Philippines. then the, the images of very many places and the chaplet of Divine Mercy and everything. Yeah. So people hear about Divine Mercy, but they don't hear about the whole message. You know, mm. Jesus told St. Faustina, if people don't respond to my mercy, they'll perish forever. Mm. And then he actually sent an angel to take her on a tour of hell. You know, section 741 of her diary. And uh, mm. and she and he said, write it down. So nobody can say that hell doesn't exist or nobody could, nobody's ever been there, you know. So uh, part of the divine mercy is that God is showing us mercy. But another part of what, what Jesus said to St. Faustina is the time of mercy is going to come to an end. And then the time of judgment will be here. And if people don't respond to mercy while it's still time for giving mercy, they're going to experience the judgment, you know? So, mm -hmm. so people even distort the divine mercy message, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. 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 Uh, and I remember in Fatima, uh, the, yes. the Virgin Mary showing the image of hell to the yeah. three kids. Yeah. And it should terrify people. They, they're terrified yeah. <laughs> in the image of hell. Yeah. I have the three kids right over here. Wow. I'm take my camera and see if I can get the three kids. Okay. There, wow. There's the three kids. Yeah. I have nice. uh, just, uh, Francisco and Lucia. And uh, the three kids are, are very inspiring. You know, they, they are. Yeah. How they responded to the Lord is just really, really special, you know, and uh, how they responded to the vision of hell is really mm -hmm. special. I mean, hardly a day went by where Jacinta didn't say, What have you done to offer a sacrifice for the salvation of souls today? And uh, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Hi, this is Jay Aruga of the Jay Aruga Show. If you like what you just saw, please consider subscribing and smash that like button. We'll need all of your help to take back the culture from this ideological colonization of the West. Thank you.